This video is brought to you by that awkward moment where you send someone you like a text message and you are wondering if it was way too forward. Hi, welcome to this video about why dating is fucked or more specifically why most people think it is fucked and how to go about it. Because what I find is, is most people have a mindset that there are all of these really unconscious rules. So this is gonna be a bit of a rant. And if you are listening to this, if you are watching this, if you are doing something with this video, I really am excited for you because you are in for a roller coaster. So I really want you to understand there are a few things that we're going to talk about. And the first thing is we're going to talk about how why dating is fucked and why most people's dating life is fucked and really how to step out of that and why we want to step out of that and really start to play a different kind of game altogether. And more importantly, one mindset at the end of this video, I'm gonna be giving you a mindset like a fucking holy thing from God to you as this mindset that will, I fucking guarantee you, if you understand this, if you really integrate it, if you feel it, if you know it, this is that kind of mindset that really will shift the way your emotions work and you know your relationships with other people is just a reflection of your relationship with yourself. So, most people's dating lives are fucked because they think they're playing certain games. They think that it's not good to be needy or it's really like a painful situation that, they, that they're gonna have to keep trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing. Often what I find is I ask people a metaphor question. Now, if you don't know what it is, a metaphor question is to explain yourself or explain a situation in terms of a metaphor. Now, what some people say when I ask them, what is dating like? What are relationships like? What are these things like? People often say, dating is like a job interview. You know, dating is like a pain in the ass. Dating is like a bomb that goes off. Why? Because that's what they feel it is. And so when you're in this emotional state, because your emotional state is what matters the most, what will happen is, is that when you think it's a pain in the ass, you will meet people who are pains in the ass to perpetuate this mindset. It's what we call emotional resonance. Emotional resonance is how often we shape the world to view or to reconstruct or to be in alignment with how we think and feel. For example, if you want a simple way of looking at this, someone who is strong will meet weak people to affirm how strong they are. Another way of looking at it this, is just that, you know, scared people meet scared people. Angry people meet angry people. Happy people meet happy people. So what I find is, and the sheer amount of comments that I get on YouTube going, oh, but you know, fuck this guy, it's really angry, and ah, oh, like, there's, there's a lot of emotions going along that really, those emotional states, they're asking me questions from that emotional state, and therefore it's the wrong question to ask. Because they might say, how do I get my validation? How do I get what I want? How do I get what I need? But those questions are always the same question, and that question is always, how do I make him make me happy? But it was never his fucking job. It was your job. So the thing is, we want a dimensional shift, because the way I look at it, there's like a million cultures going on or subcultures going on in the community that we have. That angry people will line up with angry people and they can almost only see the anger in people. They meet angry people, if you're not angry, they'll make you angry just because that's their emotional resonance. They will, they'll go to angry clubs, they'll go to angry music, they'll go to angry bars. And so, well, the questions that you ask from that angry state will be anger. You know, they, if dating is fucked because most people are coming from it as a way to solve their problems. But, it's not the case. Look at every relationship that works, or every relationship that is momentarily working, because that's the thing I want to mention in a second, that really what's happening in that momentary action is that they are in a state of joy and in a state of pleasure, and when things are good, they get better because that's how it goes. When you're in a good state, you find good things, you perpetuate the goodness, you perpetuate the joy. So what happens is, is when you're in a angry state, or you're in a sad state, or you're in a depressed state, or you're in a state that isn't really gonna serve you, the questions you ask are not always the best. Because if I ask you how to not be depressed, you know, you might say take drugs. You might come up with good answers, but you also come up with answers that might numb you. But if I ask you how to be more happy, how to get more out of life, how to juice the fucking essence of life, you come up with different questions because it's a different emotional state. That's often why I find people often really like working with me is because just fucking being around me is like I'm a, I'm a tidal wave of positive emotion. There is nothing you can do that might be the end of the world that I will probably be like, I am so glad that happened to you because look where you are now. So 
I really want you to understand this, that dating is only fucked because in the emotional state that you are in, it probably does not serve you, unless it does. But if you're watching a video like this and if you've continued to watch it up to this point, something is probably resonating with you. That you're probably feeling, wait, how I'm feeling is not going the way I want it to go. Because always, here's the big thing. And if you have a pen and paper, I want you to write this down. The big thing is that you should never ask yourself what to do. You know, what do I do to get this person to like me? What do I do to do this thing? What do I do to, you know, get this person to text me back? You know, and sometimes I do videos like that because I, I want to pull people out of that mindset. I want people to get a taste of what victory feels like. I want them to get a taste of what how joy feels like. Instead of asking what to do, you should always ask yourself what to feel. Because when you ask yourself what to feel, you shift. You start to have a dimensional shift. You shift vibrations. You shift energy levels. And you shift levels in an elevator in a building you start to move from one dimension to another because when you ask yourself what to feel if you want someone to text you back if you want someone to love you if you want your relationships to work when you ask yourself what do i want to feel it might be that i want to feel happy and then the key is to find to feel that happiness find ways to feel that happiness and when you work with me one-on-one -on -one, i'll show you the ways i'll show you the strategies and we'll anchor it really deep and what you do is basically is you find ways to feel that happiness outside of the relationship unconditionally from the relationship that you have. If you can be happy unconditionally from the relationship, what happens is, is suddenly relationships that don't make you happy or don't make you fulfilled, they fade away, they disappear because they're in another dimension. You have a change of guards where you shift away from the old relationships and you start to move towards the new, better relationships that are more in alignment with who you are. So instead, when we start to ask ourselves, what do we want to feel? What do we want to feel? Do we want to feel happy? Do we want to feel fulfilled? Do we want to feel joy? And I'll give you the mindset in a second of what is, what I find is the most powerful resonance for emotions when it comes to dating and how to make dating a little bit less fucked. Um, you ask yourself, what do I want to feel? And those things might be, hey, I just want to feel happy. And so that becomes your internal compass. When you want to feel happy and happiness is in your internal compass and you start to meet people that don't make you happy, then maybe it's time to stop meeting those people. For example, if you're doing online dating and online dating is not making you happy, then maybe it's time to stop online dating. If you're doing, if you're going out trying to meet people, you're like, oh, I gotta go out. I gotta go out once a week and go to a club because if I don't, I won't meet people. And if that's not making you happy, then stop doing it because you want to live in your happiness. But then you say, but Harvey, how do I meet people if I'm not taking action? Action itself is irrelevant. Don't ask how, ask why. Don't ask what to do, ask what to feel. Because all the evidence, all the things that you need, and here's the same, this is for like everything. This is what I find, this is for every part of life. You find that often how you treat one thing is how you treat everything. So for example, often everything you need is already within arm's reach. That things like Tinder, things like online dating, things like that only exist because when you're in a state that you believe that things are hard, you find up and line up with and meet things that affirm how hard it is. If you think dating is hard and fucked, you then get attracted to platforms and mediums and ways of communicating and things like that and strategies and ideas that make it harder because that's just how it goes. You reaffirm emotional resonance, psychic resonance. You reaffirm your beliefs and your emotional state. So we want to make a dimensional shift and start to take a whole new way of looking at it. So instead, what we want to do is feel that happiness, unconditional happiness, despite what is happening, despite the emotions that are there, despite the relationship, despite what is going on. Because if you can feel it outside and that is your compass, pretty soon you follow that compass so well, so passionately, you become more sensitive to your compass. The amount of people, for example, I will, I have a sixth sense for telling if someone is single or if not, or if their ability, if they're wanting to be open or not, if they want to meet you or not, because of my internal compass. I can tell because I've had all those experiences, but you will not have those experiences. You will not line up and meet those experiences if your internal compass is misaligned. Because if you're looking at frustration, if you're beating that drum, if you're finding more ways to find more ways to be frustrated, and you're telling your friends, I am so frustrated, look at this thing. This thing right here, it makes me frustrated. This is a metaphor right now, but as an example, I have this thing 
Hey everyone, look how fr look at my thing, I'm frustrated. Then you go to clubs, you go to the frustrated club. And you and your friends, you feel good because you're telling each other, oh, I'm frustrated. Tell me how frustrated you are. Oh, I'm angry. Tell me angry how angry you are. I want to know because I want to affirm my belief that the world is an angry place. What you then find is, is you're, you're constructing this angry world, but you're still affirming it. So instead, stop telling people how shit things are going. At the very least, stop that because... As you keep telling that, you keep making it louder and louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. You're like playing rock music when what you want to listen to is happy music, but you cannot hear the happy music because your complaining is so fucking loud. So instead, we turn down the angry music and we turn up the happy music. We allow yourself to feel happiness unconditionally because you might say, I want the relationship, I want the money, I want the goals, I want the everything, things like that. I want the fitness, for example. I want the clients, I want the business, I want the, the education, I want the grades, I want the job, I want the admiration, I want the success, I want the recognition, I want the fame, I want the position. Because you think it'll make you happy. Because your internal happiness is perceived to be out external, but instead you then shift it to internal. We allow yourself to feel it unconditionally. When you can feel it unconditionally, what happens is, very simply, you step out of it. You find your path of least resistance, your pathway of least resistance. You move away from all those people and things that hold you back. You stop complaining about all the bullshit motions. You stop complaining about that. You start to really feel and understand and get to know people. You start to connect with them. You make them happier because you are happier. People then start to gravitate towards you. They start to meet towards you. Remember how I said everything is already within, within arm's reach. Every day you have the possibility of meeting someone. Every fucking day you step out the door. You are surrounded by human beings. So why do we are so addicted to our phones to say, but we have to meet someone through our phone? The method itself is irrelevant. There were not phones like, like, your parents didn't meet by a fucking mobile dating app. They did not exist. And maybe in the future, when this video, you know, everyone only got together via Tinder. Someone will uncover this future in, video in the future and they're like, he's right. My great-great-grandparents didn't get together. So why are we so addicted to it? Why do we think that it's the only way? It's because it's a security blanket. It's a security blanket that we think we need to go through this platform because we are too afraid to be without it because without it we have to fucking confront ourselves but you never had to confront yourself because that confronting yourself, confronting your demons was always in a way that affirmed your insecure way that insecure people meet insecure things make, make insecure relationships make more things insecure, and you line up with things that reaffirm your insecureness. So therefore, the simple thing is to start to become braver, to step out, to realize that it's a dimensional shift, to realize you don't have to be so stressed out, to realize that meeting people online does not have to be the only way, to realize you can start to meet people in a different way, to realize that people can come to you because you're so attractive. To realize that you can be magnetic in other ways. To realize that everything you want is already within arm's reach. The partner, the career, the lover, the everything. Because how you treat one thing is how you treat everything. If you think you have to try for things, then you will find things that make you try. But if you believe it should be easy, then you will find easier ways to make it easier. And one thing is following that compass. Which might lead you through painful paths. But painful paths are often a letting go. We, we, we need to deal with things so we can get better at them, you know? But if you are dealing it from a, a way of everything is frustrating, then you will constantly be ramming your head against the wall. But if you look at it in a way that is easy, it doesn't have to be so fucking hard, then you will start to realize that you don't have to hit your head against the wall, that you can go, okay, I'll just go this way instead. Isn't that nicer that you can walk around the wall? Or you don't even have to climb the wall. So the one mindset I want to share with you, after I've yelled at you, thank you for letting me yell at you, is that dating should be 
carefree. Very simple. Dating should and is extremely carefree. That all those little things, the logistics, the figuring out what message to send, those all these kinds of stuff, when you follow it as carefree, all of those worries move away. It's like laws of physics. Love, dating is like physics. You know, when there's friction, it slows it down. There is a delay between your thought and the actions that you take. But when you take it from a carefree nature, you tend to collapse that, that there is very little response time between what you think and what you achieve and what you take action, things like that. Because think about it, what's feeling better about dating? Feeling like there's all this thing you need to do. Feeling like, oh my God, I've got to take all of this action. Feeling like, what message do I send? Worrying about if someone likes you or not. Or being a bit carefree about it all. Because when you're carefree, you might actually go for what you need, what you want. Dating should be carefree. When someone comes to you and they say, I don't want anything serious, you say, great. Because that's what I was looking for too. Why do you think I want something serious with you? <laughs> Little things like that. And then you might say, but if I don't get something serious, uh, I've got I've to let someone know that I want something serious because if I don't, then how will I get what I want? Again, you're, you're going back to panic. You're going back to anxiety. We want to go back to carefree. Because instead, when carefree, then you can move up to the higher emotions. You can move up to the more beautiful emotions, which are things like, you know, beautiful moments, feeling happy, feeling joy, feeling love. But without that carefreeness, you won't be able to go to those things. You won't be able to, you won't be able to create magic moments. You won't be able to create those shared moments with another human being. You won't be able to feel happy with that person. For example, you know, often people will come to me with the example that every person that I like, it does not work out. And every person that I don't like, why do they seem to like me? It's because you're more carefree with those per people that aren't chase that are that, because you're more carefree with those people that are chasing you, that you don't necessarily want them, and so you do everything right as consequence without even realizing it. So I want you to invite yourself to be a little bit more carefree. I want you to invite yourself to allow yourself to wonder. Does stressing out about things feel better or does being carefree feel better? Does worrying about what I want to send feel better or does not worrying about it feel better? Does thinking every day, oh my God, does this person want me feel better? Or just thinking, okay, no, 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 it does not matter anyway because I'm going to be happy regardless feel better. Ask, you the, ask yourself these contrasting questions because if we can get you to feel this carefree feeling without anything externally happening, then suddenly nothing else feels good enough and you will keep returning to that. And when you keep returning to that, you'll keep returning to be carefree. All of a sudden, all the worries will melt away and you'll start to align yourself and meet people who are also in that same alignment, that you are already full of love, that you are already full of joy, that you are already full of happiness. And the only thing that's stopping you from getting there is a hell of a lot of worry. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like because if you did, then I like you. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this because when you subscribe, it makes me happy. And um, also, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to loveonmyterms.com. Everyone gets one free call, but also I really recommend uh, when we work together, we do like a six-week program. It's fucking amazing. The amount of lives that we've transformed, things like that, depending on where you are. Some people want to rewrite their love story. Some people are looking for the next best thing. Regardless, I am there to get you there from whatever point you're at. It's not therapy. It's better. So thank you so much for watching. And, you know, please share this with everyone you know. And if you hated this video, please sure to share, share this with everyone that you hate. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.